Hey guys, how are you doing today? It's Furrow here and in a world where Echo decks are king, we want to be the emperor and that's why we are playing today more control warrior stuff. Starting our session here directly against another warrior, so let's assume that he's also playing an aggressive warrior deck. That means the warx here is pretty good, revenge is pretty good, we'll drop the Gaul and the Gromash for sure and hope to find something else to play early on, that would be wonderful. Another revenge and a dirty red. That should work out decently. Let's see if our opponent is running the pirate package. Hmm, he's not dropping anything on turn one. Never a good sign. Would be bad if he's also playing control. Damn, the game is taking way too long. As a warx, are you hitting the face? You are not. Oh boy, I guess we are facing another control deck. Why am I even playing control? Now that might take a while. Take a little of pain. Yeah, for sure. He is playing control. And then the Elise is pretty good in this specific matchup. So we can use the weapon here. We could go into the coin. Elise. Um, <laughs> I guess we we're definitely killing this one. And for now, we are just taking a bit of armor. We're keeping the coin for now. See what we are facing here in the next round. Normally we are just dropping Elise, getting the value out of her. That's definitely very important in this matchup. If you are getting into the Golden Monkey. Hmm. Okay. There are some pirates in it. Why was the start so slow? With the Acolyte of Pain, the weapon that was not hitting the face. That's pretty unusual. We will just drop the revenge for now. Take some armor up here and that will be it for this round. Just to make sure that the pirates are out of the board if he has a blood cell cultist. If he is still playing full pirates. Normally you shouldn't have the acolyte of pain in the deck then. Maybe that's a super new trick. But I doubt that that is working. Yeah, there's a blood cell cultist. So then we don't need the Elise. There's no use in this matchup. But what we can do is go for the Ali Armor Smith. That should provide us with a lot of armor. At least he needs to hit us two times if he's not going if he's going for a heroic strike and then attack us with the weapon. Then we're only getting two armor back. We have the chance to play the dirty red next turn alongside a brawl or a bash or maybe the revenge. Then we can kill two two units. On his side, hopefully. So there's a the ghoul. Wow, what are you playing? That's some sort of hybrid. Executing and a ghoul. That is so unusual. Oh, anyway, we're definitely kill killing the board. No problem. Go bash. And let's get more armor. So currently we're at 22. Let's wait a bit longer with the dirty red. We will push another four. That will push us down to um, to 18 back. Four cards in hand. And the, I mean the worst could be that he's buffing the weapon again. Okay, a rocketeer. What is he doing? Just pushed everything he has on the deck. So a gore hole is interesting. We could just get rid of the rocket here if we drop, for example, the ghoul and the cool taskmaster. Would still give us the opportunity to just drop more armor. We could just go into the dirty red. Wouldn't be bad as well. I mean, we still have the chance then to kill. And I guess we are still killing this one first and then playing the dirty red. So the worst option would be that he's getting Leroy Jenkins. But even then the Leroy needs to hit the Dirty Red so we're not losing that much. I don't like to um, to play the Ghoul after the Dirty Red. So that's why we will do that now. But killing his rocket here. We are dropping the Dirty Red. See what he's getting. Wow, why would you play Defender of Argus? This deck doesn't make any sense. 
Berserker. Okay, that one is getting a bit bigger. Battle weight for one card draw. That is by far the most insane pirate deck I've ever seen. Not even sure why you're doing that. Doesn't make any sense. So we definitely want to take more armor here. I guess we're using the shield slam on the brother car. He has an X there, so if we take out all his units, he's not able to hit the face. Hit him for another two, and we will drop the Elise. The We're not getting any value out of her, but the body is nice. We're currently at 15 life. Right now he needs to kill the Dirty Red, and he needs to hit that two times with the weapon. He's not getting some sort of... Uh, Mortal Strike is good, so he can hit us for another three. We can heal back with the armor for two, so he's not pushing too much. And only one card left. So normally the game should be over at this point, but I'm still not sure what his plan was. Pretty unusual. We're dropping the goal. Six in the face. So we would need to get some huge draws out of his deck to turn the tides. But now he's able to push three and then he has two cards in the hand. So with stuff like the Elite and the Leroy, there would be a lot of damage, but we are still able to survive, barely. Keeping the weapon. Get back. So he's looking for some upgrade here. Would be nice for him to drop another Ravaging Goo. So now he's going for the face. At three in the face, we're down to nine. So far, so good. We will just use an execute here, losing one of the units. I don't like to hit him with the goal. We need we need the um, the life here. We can't hit the unit. Map on the gold monkey. Another weapon. Great success. Great success. Oh, let's kill this one. And yeah, let's just pass. There's no point. We're just keeping the goal. Maybe he has some sort of unit that we need to kill with the weapon. But otherwise we would just go for the face with it. Playing another ghoul. Oh man. Shield block. Wonderful. Let's pick up the shield block. See what else we can get. A dirty red. Also wonderful. So with the dirty red now. We will just drop that here. See what we can find. Nothing. So that means there is either a spell or another weapon, but probably a spell because a weapon he would have just dropped here. There is no weapon currently in his hand. Uh, so we will just take out the ghoul now. We still have so much life. Not able to kill us. And of course the dirty rat is also holding a stance so that he's not able to hit the face. Yay, Battle Rage. I'm seriously not sure what his plan is with the deck. He's using control cards and he's using the aggressive cards. Doesn't make any sense. There's the Gore Hole, which is pretty nice if you can buff those. But we are just getting more and more armor now. We don't care for him. We are winning in the late game. He has 10 cards left. Another one. And the elite. Guess what? We are just clearing your board. Because we can. Sylvanas Windrunner. Ooh, that's nice. We just stop Sylvanas and the Brawl. Either stealing a unit or we're keeping Sylvanas on the board. But then he's of course hitting that with the gore hole. Um, other option we have is just killing the Berserker here. And uh, using, for example, the Ghoul and uh, the Execute to take out the Elite wouldn't be too bad either. So we're doing this one. And of course, armor back, back to 18. We'll then take out the Ghoul, the Gore Hole. So the weapon is at 5. Still good enough for the Ranas.
Yay, golden monkey. Oh, so if we drop the golden monkey, he's not able to kill that right now. So, and we have 18 lives still. So I would say, I would say we don't need to wait any longer. We can just go into that. The coin will be replaced with the unit. So what do we have here? King Crush. Ooh, we have the Exit Maw, we have the Gormok, and we have Scenarios, which is giving us more towns, which is pretty good. So even if he's now coming back with some super strong aggressive cards, which is unlikely, has played most of his stuff, then we can still use uh, the towns here. And there's a Conceit. I'm still not sure what his plan with the deck was. That was so unusual. But let's take that down. Okay guys, game 2 will be against the mage. So let's just assume that he is playing Reno Mage. So that might be might be very interesting. Uh, so keeping the Fiery War Axe. That's good. That's good, that's good. Give me some other decent cards. Execute Acolyte of Pain. Now that should work out. With the War Axe we can make sure that we are clearing the board and then the Acolyte. Uh, is probably target for a spell, especially if he's a Reno Mage. Oh, coining? What are you coining at? Cult Sorcerer. Ooh, are you playing Tempo Mage? I mean, that's possible. Definitely need to kill this one. If he's playing with Tempo Mage, the Acolyte's definitely not staying on the board. He has so many spells then. Torch is good enough. Crossball is good enough. <laughs> Another cult sorcerer. Definitely need to kill this one as well. We will drop the Acolyte alongside. If he has, for example, in a calm blast, he could just take out the Acolyte. And we are only doing one card. Take a bit more damage here. And he's definitely playing Tempo Mage. There's not a chance that he's playing double cult sorcerer in um, in Arena Mage. So Sorcerer Apprentice. Uh, yeah, we're drawing two cards here. It's pretty good. Cool Taskmaster. And let's hit this one with the Shield Slam. Taking it out. If he's dropping one spell, the Mana Womb is of course good enough to take out the Acolyte of Pain. But let's see what he's doing. That's a babbling book. The Secret. Ooh, are you deciding to just go for the face? That's interesting. So what could the secret be? Quite a lot. Because that was created by the Babbling Book. He's not running that in his uh, normal deck. And we'll just kill the Babbling Book. Maybe that will give us a hint. No hint. Okay, then we will drop the Aliyama Smith. That will give us some. Oh, oh he's copying that. What a shame, but I mean, his life is currently not interesting for us. We need to make sure that we are surviving until he is running out of resources. And right now, those two units are not good enough to clear the Eliyama Smith. Going for the Cabalist, that will give him more cards. Oh, that will be it. What a shame. Though I would say we will just go for the Execute here. We will hit this one. He's getting two points of armor, which is okay. Elise, Elise, Elise. But with the execute, we're taking out the Eliyama Smith. We'll take out the Mana Bim here for sure. And because we got the Elise right now, we will play this one alongside. The game might take a bit longer. And that's a decent body. Because of the Cabalist, he now has three random cards, so... Could be a surprise here and there. Frostbolt. Taking out the Aliyama Smith. Okay, we will go for Shield Block. See what we can draw. Another one. Mm, I don't like that too much to drop alongside. We are just going for the Acolyte of Pain here again. Because if needed, 
we have stuff like the Gravitching Ghoul or the Revenge here or the Cool Taskmaster. So we should be able to draw more cards. Greater Arcane Missiles. See clearing the whole board. And uh, nope. The release is staying on the board. And then we will get another shield block. More armor is never bad. Yeah, Eliyama Smith is also never bad. So the Tempo Mage is uh, trying to burn us down, but if we're just getting so much armor, he's not standing a chance. The Spell Slinger gives us another spell. We got a Flame Strike, which is also never bad if he's just dropping um, all his four life units, like a Flame Waker. They're just dying to the Flame Second. He's not expecting that. Blast. Ooh, shall we? Dirty Red into Flame Strike would be interesting, or Dirty Red into Gore Hole. I guess we're doing that. Where well, we can find. Oh, yeah. What a nice catch. What a nice catch. We are taking this one out. And let's hit him for two and race. Getting two armor back, so back to 30 life. We have stolen. Is huge, huge finisher. And without the Antonidas, there shouldn't be enough burn to kill us. Apprentice, intellect, not even dropping a flame waker. So he's in real trouble. And we don't care if you kill the dirty rat. We're just clearing the board. With the gore hole and the LA armor smooth, getting more armor. So normally he just has lost at this point. And he's still, he still keeps on going. But guess what? Everything is going down. So we have the chance to play the flame strike. We can play revenge and the ravaging ghoul. Decent stuff. Oh, another one. Yeah, we are going for the revenge and the ghoul. Definitely keeping the flame strike for now. So just getting more and more armor. Easy peasy. And if you are the tempo mage in this position, you can just concede. There is no point in keep on going. We are creating too much armor and he's not able to, to hit us with that much in the face. He has played the fireballs here, he has played a frostbolt already, he's losing the Antonidas. So if he's playing for example with the Fire Lord, there is another big threat in the deck, but that's normally not good enough. Ooh, Divine Favor. He is drawing now four cards, which also means that he's nearly, nearly, nearly out of cards. Down to eight. We are still at 11, so he's also dying in fatigue here. And we're just getting more and more armor. Double Bash, Brawl, good stuff in hand. Another babbling book, more random cards for him. Oh, double water elemental. A good one. What I mean, bash bash would kill this one, then shield slam would kill this one. But I guess we are keeping the shield slam for now. That might be too good, too good to be true. We are taking out a water elemental nonetheless. And with the double bash, we're taking out the other one as well. And the ghoul is also killing our babbling book here. So we are at 36 life. He's lost a lot of his burn stuff. Still keep on pushing here. Spell Slinger gives another random card. Bite's also nice. So we got a decent selection. He got a secret here. Which could be again everything. Everything and nothing. I really want to keep the cruel taskmaster if we have the health scream. But I also don't like to use the shield slam on the spell singer, so we will just hit the face, see what there is. Vaporize. In that case, in that case, just get a bit more of armor. We have the weapon that is killing the spell slinger without a problem.
Could be another copy secret, which would be bad. Could be a counter spell. Stuff like that. Just take a true heart. Oh yeah. Just more and more armor. Let's kill the spell slinger. Maybe that's a copy. Oh shit, I wanted to use the... Ah, damn it. Wanted to use the armor up first. I uh, lost two armor here. That was not so great. But I mean the outcome is the same, so... Doesn't matter in the end, we're still winning fireball. That's the second one. So he's out of fireballs now. If he's not getting some random stuff. But the brawl, we will just keep on using the tank up. If we would use Bite on the Gorehole and Gromash with the cool Taskmaster, we could push him under one, but there is also a chance that this one is copying a card or that he's using some counter spell. Ah, uh, the Tusker Jouster. Ah, oh, wait, he was playing Firelands Portal. Okay, Firelands Portal, he was getting the Jouster. I would say we will just go for another red. Ooh, Yaks are on. That's also a nice pickup. And there is a conceit. Finally. Well, that was fun. 